have stakeholder engagement, you have uh, opportunity for uh, the public to inform the end product, uh, an actual public hearing, and then you do things through an ordinance, and you, you're only doing things by contract. Well, and I think the option B as opposed to option A, which was sort of the path going down, recognizes this is going to be, it's going to take time and there's a lot of process involved. Right. And testing the market, negotiating, compromising, rearranging, figuring it out. We, we need to get there before we come up with a plan that will, that will withstand the necessary public process that's required in the statute. Using your words, what the RFP does is spells out what the community terms should be. Right. Uh, and I, part of what started to concern us when we were looking at option A is that um, I, there, there was some lack of clarity about what those community terms ought, ought to be. And, mm -hmm. and the last time this group met, that, that came out as well in your conversation. So taking the time to sort of step back and think about, you know, if we're going to ask private investors to put some skin in the game, and we know we want something back that's a public value out of that kind of an investment, what are we willing to put on the table and how are we going to match that? that? That becomes a pretty important set of conversations to have and to have that be reflected in the RFQ, RFP document. Um, it, otherwise, the foundation for the partnership isn't there. And, and it, it uh, risks the situation that Jay referenced early and earlier in which you put it out there and there are no responses. So taking the time to be very clear about that I, I, I think is a really important piece of achieving success here. But waiting to move forward with adopting the whole plan until the master plan is complete risks losing a lot of really great momentum that has been built up through this process. So option B, whether it's B1, B2, B4, uh, <laughs> Uh, it helps to split the difference between those a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. More? Well, uh, you've provided us with time frames for ABC, milestones and months, and I don't really have a sense for what B2 would take. Have you considered that? Is it, I don't think it's different necessarily, right? I mean, it might require a little more time to develop the RFP from B. Um, yeah, it's pretty close to B. Mm -hmm. It's just um, <coughs> the difference is uh, the estimates and the other one and the different. Yeah, I, I think the other one, I think we, we should probably sharpen our pencils and, and work through that to make sure it's realistic. But I, but I think we'll, but what I think we're really trying to uh, suggest is that uh, a is just way too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, B seems reasonable in the time frame. We're really not going to have a plan for a year. Really. And C, I mean, I, I think you put down uh, end of year 215, but if we're really going to, well, if we're really going to coordinate it with the uh, downtown mm -hmm. master plan, I'd have to ask you when will that be? Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think this is too optimistic. This, this so I, guess, yeah. I, I think the expectations we're trying to manage is we're going to get something going full speed in the first quarter. We're going to have a major, hopefully we're going to be able to wrap up something with much more specificity and something we can all be proud of by the end of next year. And that's the time frame we're talking about. We're not being too specific. And to get the community engaged. Oh, and the yeah. community will be engaged throughout. Right. right. That's my point. That's that RFP. Yeah. And we'll think we should think of, at some point, subsets of what do we do when we get all the RFQs and RFQs in? And what is the process for evaluating them? And what kind of citizen involvement, either through committee or whatever? Something to think about. I was just going to add, if I may, that the, uh, I think that the relatively easy part is moving forward with the resolution and coming to city council and creating an our intention to create the CRA and getting that forward. The hard part is the RFP. Right. And drafting the RFP, and frankly, I'm not convinced that we'll have that done um, and ready to go out on the street by the end of this year. Uh, I think it may take us longer as we get into conversations with property owners. We'll learn what their interests are and how willing they are to support 
participate as we get into conversations with developers who may be interested in this process. We'll also learn some more. So I think that what was put forward here was more how do we get the, the, the sort of phase one of option B done. The RFQ, I think, or RFP is, is something that I think is going to take more time and is going to have to be more reactive to the sort of feedback we get. Um, again, I think just throwing it out there without some pretty substantial back and forth with the development community is going to get, is not going to yield the response. So you're suggesting sort of pre-testing a little bit with the market to make sure we get people interested in that same way. Or, or putting it out as an RQ <coughs> first and then narrowing it down from there to the handful that seems to make the most sense. Which is another. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I was going to go sort of that direction. So I, I, I do think that uh, we've still got some work to do in terms of fleshing out the content here even before we sit down with the council in terms of a recommendation. Um, and I, uh, I think uh, we need to give some more thought in terms of how information is presented to the full council um, so that they can understand where we are at the moment with all of these elements. There's, uh, there's a lot of different pieces. The, uh, some of the things that I, I think that we need to be clear about and building agreement over is, um, you know, the concept of, uh, that's been laid out so far in terms of uh, the properties that we're interested in, uh, uh, being inclusive of the entire uh, proposed, current proposed boundary of CRA, you know, uh, making sure that everybody's comfortable with that in terms of process little bit more in terms of the actual mechanics of how the RFP would work and how, uh, uh, how that would happen, uh, and, and particularly in terms of how it relates to the master planning process, how that, that, that scope, I think it would help to have a little bit of discussion about how those things fit together. Uh, my own hope, again, is that uh, you know, I, I like what's being proposed because I, uh, I strongly believe that we need to have partners where people are willing to put their money on the table and say we want to we, we partner with the city and, uh, and do it in a way that is absolutely clear for the whole, for the whole public to see this is, this is what I want to build, have, you know, we want to include you folks in this process. So, <coughs> Some, some kind of back and forth uh, activity needs to happen there. Um, there's a resource side to the equation here that uh, I think needs to be part of an RFP, uh, or it's almost the pre-RFP, where what I would imagine is um, almost a resource fair in some ways, where we have the uh, National Development Council come to the table and say, here's the mechanics for the Build America Fund. Here's the mechanics for what different uh, tax credit options could be uh, in, in this, uh, uh, in, in your CRA area. So, in, so here's what uh, public-private capital packaging could look like, mm -hmm. so that you have property owners and uh, the public uh, and potential developers sitting down at the table with uh, the resource experts and say uh, and ask questions, you know, in terms of how uh, how a potential project could be structured. In, in including what might be asked for from the city as a municipal corporation in terms of issuing anything, you know, whether it's private activity bond cap or, you know, whatever you want to, whatever you can imagine. What is it that we would like the, the city to contribute to this equation? A, a bond? A, you know, so, it, uh, but it would just be a, an opportunity for people to, uh, 
uh, at, at a resource fair, uh, get technical questions answered about how a project could be packaged. So my, I, I'm sort of well, no, putting I mean, in that. I mean, well, no, I certainly agree that when we go out, we should um, talk about what the city's prepared to consider mm -hmm. as it's part of the partnership. And NDC can help inform that discussion. I don't know if we have the store tax credits, we'll have tax credits for that. Certainly we have land, which is extraordinary. Um, <clears throat> um, but it's the proposals that they're coming back in which they will they will say, I'm prepared to do this, but I need parking. Or I'm prepared to do this, but I need streets. Oh, and, and in we start negotiating. It, it, well, in terms of infrastructure and uh, amenities that are in the public domain, I get that part. I, yeah. No, I'm more concerned about. Uh, I, I want our development partners and our and our private landowners to understand what might be available through an NDC. Oh, yeah, well, um, that, that that's uh, I guess part of the uh, that would be part of the equation for me. And, uh, I mean, look, well, that points is a very good one too. Where I've seen this done successfully is there's a competition on an RFQ for picking the developer, the preferred developer who has the first option. And we commit that we will not sell our property to anybody else or do anything for a period of time. Right. So that they, they can then spend the resources to be talking to the property owners, bring in architects and environmental people and start imagining what's possible here. Mm -hmm. If you get a really good developer and they really think this is a market, they will then come back with designs and proposals and investments and they will, we will start negotiating about what they're willing to do and can say no. Um, but they have enough skin and they, they have enough assurances that we're not going to go anywhere else for a while for them to invest the time and the effort and the resources to really think imaginatively and even meet with the community. Mm -hmm. Because it's important that they be accepted by the community, so that the right, con you know, a lot of this can be done by design and, and just really <coughs> high quality mm -hmm. stuff. So we, we should think about that. And um, um, we're we'll just we're just going to have to debate about the wisdom or the opportunity for a master developer versus individual property owners doing their own thing, or how do, we, how do we meld those together? And I think it might very well be a combination of both. The master developer will look and realize that uh, some of the individual property owners are going to want to do their things, but they will talk about how to integrate those and, and optimize the value between them. Mm -hmm. this is, you know, we, we want to create this marketplace out there. So we'll, we'll do some thinking about that. Okay. I think for the for the next meeting, at least, as I understand it, we should have a pretty full idea, I, I, I would suggest. Here are the goals that we want to achieve by going forward, you know, they, they, moving the conversation but not overplaying our hand, you know, figure out what all that means and what that would mean. And then outline, perhaps do some preliminary thinking of the RFP, RFQ might look like, think about, and, and hopefully the city council would then say, yes, this option, I, I suggest we're not presenting five of them, but we say this is the option, mm -hmm. and we're just going to spell it out. Is it one recommended? And uh, if, if we get a go ahead, then we start putting together even more detail. <clears throat> yeah, good. Uh, I, uh, I guess I would also appreciate uh, being clear in terms of what, uh, what at this stage we, we think are the, uh, the principles that the, the high-level principles that might use be used for a uh, a decision process at all the different stages. So it's not it's not simply that we want quality development; it's we want uh, you know uh, uh, increase uh, residential occupancy in downtown. Yeah. It's, it's the things that I think that are in our in our work so far that can be surfaced and brought out as uh, examples of principles that we would like to have uh, there to help sift 
between proposals. Right. Which so will be embedded in the RFPs, RFQs, yeah. and, and that will be the part of the evaluation criteria at the end, how, how people, will, their qualifications in delivering these kinds of <coughs> outcomes, and then the proposals that they ultimately develop. Yeah, I'm, I'm wanting to <coughs> sort of bring those out as a, like a poster session for the council work session, because I want the council to yes. test those high level principles and, and add some of their own or you know, say, yeah, that's what that's yeah. the right thing. Or and I would imagine some of those that involve, it will involve a public participation and input. It's got to be a critical part. Cool. And, and, and any developer is going to have to demonstrate that that's important to him yeah. or her and a track record that they've done that. And, that and, this kind of thing. and a good developer obviously will want to do that. Yeah, so I've been occasionally soundly condemned publicly <coughs> for using my Fourth Avenue Bridge analogy. Um, but the deal is that the, the reason why I always, we, we did a very successful city process for replacing the Fourth Avenue Bridge. The reason that I always go back to that is the analogy is, and what works about it for me is, that this isn't just private development. This is development that the public has a very direct influence on what the product looks like. So what the, and, and, and that's why I believe that analogy works. It's, uh, this is, it is not a public works per se, but it is a, uh, a public-private partnership in terms of the public has the opportunity to say, uh, we will do this, we will come to the table and contract with you if you build something that looks like this. It's got to look like that. Um, so, uh, I again, I, I don't know if folks understand that, that part of the effort, but it's, I think, part of our, our responsibility to clear, clearly convey to the council and the public that uh, this work is, uh, it only happens if there's a really high level of agreement in the community as to what the outcome is. So, so what I'm hearing you say is that in the written materials we provide that talk about both the process and the ultimate product, that we articulate some of these things. So exactly. It's very clear it's be what, we're dry, what we're doing here. And I, I yeah, and I think we have to look back very respectfully at all the criticism that we've received over the last couple of years and make sure that we have done an adequate job of providing responses and answers to those questions and concerns. Because I think if nothing else, what we have benefit, benefited from in terms of this you know, sort of long bruising process, is I think we've squeezed out every bit of aggravation and frustration yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and concern from people so that we can go back and respectfully say, okay, that's a that's a legitimate concern. What are we going to do about that? Uh, and I think that, uh, that our task at this point is making sure that we don't lose any of the pearls of criticism that we've received so far. Uh, I think it's been a really good process to focus on the estimates because as soon as we did that, people stopped fighting over the CRA. <laughs> and, they, and they invested in understanding what the CRA is. So here we are at this point, I think that people are basically understanding what the CRA, but we certainly understand what everybody's concerns are with the CRA. And I think it's our obligation and responsibility to address those things. Okay. And then here we are, as far as I'm concerned, we have uh, uh, the best consultants in certainly the Pacific Northwest, if not the country, in terms of feeding this process. Uh, I, and I'm not kidding. If anybody that yeah, can't see, <laughs> uh, anybody that can't see the, the quality in terms of information that's been brought to the table, but also the thoughtfulness and, and, and past track records of, in terms of experience. And I, I think that we are, are, we're not shirking on quality. Um, and I, um, I really think it's up to this community to say, uh, how are we going to make this work? Uh, I, uh, I don't, you know, in, in this climate, with this economy, with where the state is, where the federal government is, 
I don't see any options in terms of meeting our objectives, socially or environmentally, or economic development on the economic side, unless we do some kind of partnership in terms of development. So, can are, are we good with our recommendation? Mm -hmm. uh, unanimous consent. Uh, we're B two A sub letter three. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, but uh, here's the basic uh, calendar as I understand it. Uh, we have a work session on October twenty eighth. That's not that far away. Uh, but we need to prepare for what I call a poster session, where the full council can be brought into the conversation about the different elements. I'm not sure that that's going to be done. I think that we, we need to make sure that the, the council is, um, you know, that they're given an opportunity to ask questions and, and understand where we are at the moment and all of this work. And they also need to have an opportunity to inform the next steps and, and uh, feel that they have time to uh, own this process uh, in, in whatever direction it takes. Uh, we are scheduled to have it on our uh, November 6th business meeting. Uh, that's a potential business uh, meeting opportunity for making, but we wouldn't do any kind of council action the night of the 28th, but we would have the work session on the 28th. Uh, I would uh, if, if it's at all possible, I, uh, I would strongly suggest if there's an opportunity to just do a, a short check-in as a CERC with staff in terms of building up to the 28th, you know, if, uh, on materials on a little bit of feedback. I don't know if that's possible, but if we can do that, I would recommend that we do that. I would also say that... Um, oh, I'm sorry, what are you looking for? Are we looking for another meeting? Another short meeting, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Between now and the 28th? Yeah, so that we're, we, we're really clear what we're walking into on the 28th. And perhaps, as part of that, not, the written materials that we would propose be distributed on exactly. the 28th and given to you in advance as exactly. draft to make sure we've captured right. your discussion tonight. Yeah. And, and it might be a meeting or a phone call. Yeah, so and it's it could be done expediently, right. but I, I think that. Uh, okay. But I think that we need to have a, a sort of a, a committee and public vetting of the, of the written material that would precede the 28th, if that's possible. Just a process question. When do you typically distribute materials in advance of the work session to the full council? Thursday. The Thursday before. Yeah. So it would be the 23rd. That's what I guess that's public. Right. Oh, that's right. Right. And I'm, I would be working on the staff report. Well, it has to go public for the committee. If it's going to be vetted out, can in advance of that. That's right. Yeah. So we can do tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we already have a call set up tomorrow, so that we can do it. <coughs> we can do a little bit of vetting. We, um, some of us have a short meeting. Or we, we have a meeting on. I don't. And I'm willing to let this be a little bit. I mean, to adapt a little bit. Let, let's look at what the reality is in terms of how we get some feedback and vet this process, it, if it can work, I think that would be very helpful. I'm a little unclear as to what the expectation is so, uh, for the meeting on the 28th. Okay. Uh, you know, clearly we can polish up these, these pieces, the timeline and the options. Uh, and no, we're not talking about options. No, we just agreed unanimously with the committee. We're right. To we're, we're, fine, we're fine down to right. B2. Um, beyond that, though, what are we looking for? You know, clearly, we're not going to have an RFP done no. for the 28th. I mean, we can have some clear articulation of what an RFP is. Um, that's not terribly complicated work. In fact, We've already done that work to some extent, so I'm still not clear what the expectation is for the 28th. Mm -hmm. I, I, my own sense is the written materials would be a narrative of the option. Mm -hmm. it, it, would, it would be the goals of the process. What, what is it that we want to achieve? Yeah. Yeah. The narrative of the B option and explaining why that meets those goals. 
and embedded in that is a description of the RFP in which we would also have the goals of the project and the principles. And that, that includes you know, the quality and the public input and the, uh, that this is not a private project. Just some language around those concepts that as the city council considers, they know the direction we're going and hopefully can get comfortable that it's a direction that they can buy into and it protects, it, it, it holds out those goals and those standards and principles. And maybe a set of questions that we know that <coughs> need to be addressed that we haven't fully resolved yet, but with a set of initial thoughts yeah. along those lines. So I'm mean, looking at three or four pages. <coughs> Yeah, I, and Can you do that in four pages? <laughs> um, and uh, so, Laurel, I appreciate you mentioning the uh, response to questions, but I do think that we should do our best to uh, glean from uh, concerns that have been expressed exactly so far right. so that we have uh, responsibly done some answering to those. You know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, whether it's... Uh, condemnation or uh, that we're giving away public resources yes. to enrich corporations. You know, I, I, you know it's, it's, it's the full range of, you know, it's helping to get a clear dialogue about what this is all about uh, so that it can be a template for... Uh, well, um, one way of doing that would be uh, just a series of FAQs. Right, exactly. We've done that. Well, uh, I but, but, so I want to see it. I want to get it vetted. I, I, uh, and I'm, I want to make sure that we're working on the path for success in terms of responsibly delivering to our colleagues uh, a substantive product where they uh, can see something in advance of the meeting and be ready to engage and answer, ask their questions and inform and, process and, and start driving this process themselves. So I just want to make sure that it's there. Okay. Um, I don't see any problem with that because you know we have done a fairly extensive uh, uh, FAQ. Um, I think the biggest unanswered question at this point is developing a cogent response to the relationship to the master plan and how. Option B two uh, I think relates so relates to the master plan. Yeah, so we have part of the yeah, part of ask question. well well articulated, and, but but this changes that that relationship. Yeah. I, I'd also like the question I I have the question I don't know the answer is, but hopefully there is a good answer that what we are outlining here is different than what failed four <coughs> years ago or whenever that happened. What what is the difference? Oh, the Laredo passage. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, uh, we don't have to go into that, but whatever, whatever those lessons no. are, yeah. we should be, at yeah. least among ourselves, we should understand why, why this is different. Yeah, if we had approached the Loretta Passage using this kind of a process, I, I think we would have a fundamentally different okay. outcome. Uh, I, I don't think that we would have any high-story building built on the isthmus. I, I think... Uh, uh, I don't think that there would have been that outcome, but I think that what what was happening was at that point we had the county with a, a publicly owned piece of property. Yeah, actually, I'm not okay. Okay, I'm not looking for the answer. I think we should have an answer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that is a great way so. To number one, we're trying to heal uh, yeah. over a bad process, but we're also yeah. trying to invent a new process where the public is included in every step mm -hmm. of the way in terms of inventing a process. And assure the public that we're not going to present them with another situation that apparently they right. didn't like. Right. I don't know enough about it, but I'm it's not a blank check. It's, yeah. a, it's an agreement. Okay, so um, we're going to look for maybe a lunch or some okay. kind of a something. Uh, I, I know it's kind Perhaps of... Perhaps better than last time. But it's going to be a time, uh, a bit of, it might be a little bit of a stretch, but I, I want to make sure that we're well positioned for success on the 28th. And to me, success means that uh, the council members feel like uh, they're, you know, that they have substantive information, that they're being given an opportunity to influence and direct the process, that they're going to be feeling like they're in a position to start 
driving this thing themselves, um, feel some ownership. Uh, so, uh, and it'd be helpful to me if we really are trying to put a date on the calendar to do that tonight. And I would start by turning the keys and saying that's reasonable for you to have something for us to review. Well, I, I'd say you and Keith could start tonight. Um, I, is your calendar open? Is that what you're saying? Um, I'll, Mine is not. Okay. Well, I, I think you're, you may be one of the, yeah. the most constrained. I'm a difficult person. I, I you are a difficult person. Let the nice record show. Nathaniel is a difficult person. It's, it was recorded. So. Good. Uh, <laughs> if we could aim for the 20th, 20th, 20th or 21st, okay. so we have some time to get something together and then have some time to respond before it has to go into staff report. That would be ideal. Okay. Yeah, and of course, the interviews all day on the 20th. Um, the early schedule. So, 21st would be great. Something to watch. Um, Tag on know. to agenda setting on the 21st. Yeah. Will that work? What, a Tuesday will be? Yeah, I can do that. So. Okay, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll do a. Uh, uh, our city manager doesn't know this, but we will do a sort of a. Uh, a split agenda session. Let's do a uh, a lunch, okay. and we'll schedule it. We'll look, keep look for something in this room mm -hmm. uh, for noon to one, uh, and then uh, and then we'll go into agenda setting uh, after we're done with that. Is that okay? Good. Okay. Thank you. And uh, it, uh, I'm not asking for everything to be absolutely perfect and thought out. It's just a, an opportunity for us to walk through an agenda for the 28th. Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you, one and all. I appreciate the engagement. Uh, Jay, Lorelai, thanks for being with us. Thanks for your outstanding work. And, yeah. Uh, we're adjourned. Yeah, thank you thank so much for being willing to work with our community to, to really understand our community. Oh, yeah. So we have them all tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and folks, I've got to run to get you this. You guys have another meeting to get to. Yeah. So, so um, take care of this. This is my next one. I almost took it. The 21st, <laughs> that means you don't have a party with anyone else, right? Watch out for me. I'll take it and take it. Did she get all the other No, no. I think so. It's like a little bit. So, yeah. But I think the key is tomorrow we'll out on what needs to be Right. Exactly. Well, I think that's the right thing to do is just sort of brainstorm and get the framework all together. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
have a safe drive home. <laughs> If you have a mobile, it's in it. Yeah, we'll talk tomorrow this kind of stress test for me, it says, what are the hardest well, ways to work out in my What is it important? But what the problem we think is that we do ask, just like, so oh, yeah. some of this is just framing. So it could be anyways, yeah. 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 I, mean, I think some but of the comments are out there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one thing, thing which one I've seen in other communities is this. Okay. There is a citizen review that kicks. Oops. Come on, Sarah. 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 But you have you know, business community and right. different community, you know, right. Right. so that they're helping to take. That can that can have to be have a real good group of people who are adhering to a process that's been well defined with good criteria, you know, so that there's boundaries on that. But I've also seen it be very much and end up resulting in sort of community members hijacking. Process we voted, and you look what you did. You didn't follow our recommendation. Yeah. I've seen that happen as well. Yeah. Well, the other one is uh, this has all been run through City Hall, and there's no public input. That's so the problem. Much. It's trying to find a balance between those yeah. two. Yeah. Well, so we do have, have, we do have the C, a, a C yeah. which is already a, you know, yeah. well connected yes. to this process. Well, I on it. Put a couple people in the mix along with community members. To help to distribute that. Or at least evaluate the RFP. Okay. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you. Have a safe drive. Good night, Walt. Are you going back tonight? Do you pick your own pies? That's just fabulous. Oh, thank, Fabulous thank you. You know, I, I've had this tie for a long, long time. Is that and right? It's been looking for a shirt to go with it for...